In 1927, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to this guy, Wilson, for a machine that lets you observe radiation. It's called a cloud chamber because of the supersaturated vapor that allows particles to leave a trail of condensation. Now, I got a comment to build a cloud chamber out of thermoelectric coolers, so that's what we're gonna do today. So I started by removing the protective paper from the acrylic and constructed the chamber. I added the top piece of foam and glued fabric to it. Here's the base that I modeled and 3D printed. I added silicon in the groove to waterproof it. I drilled a hole in each corner of this piece of aluminium so that I could add the water blocks. These are responsible for removing the heat generated by these Peltier devices. I used thermal glue, but I noticed the cover wasn't great because of the rough surface. So I made sure to add plenty of glue for good contact, and here's how the first assembly turned out. I added threaded inserts here and mounted the piece of aluminium. For the cloud chamber effect to work, you have to reach as low temperature as possible on this aluminium piece, the cold side, by removing as much heat as possible from the water blocks, the hot side. If you don't know, thermoelectric coolers have two sides, one hot and one cold. When connecting electricity to it, they are highly inefficient. I have nine units and they are 120 watts each, which means we have one kilowatt of power that needs to run through these cables. Just a fraction of all that power becomes cooling power, which is why they are so inefficient. Now I 3D printed this frame with a rectangular canal in it in which we're gonna add water so that the container will have a waterproof seal and that's so that the alcohol don't evaporate so quickly. This one, by the way is 99% isopropanol. So I soldered XT90 connectors onto the wires and modified a server power supply to provide the power. Here's the tubing for the water cooling and I accidentally hit the camera which made for a decent transition. Anyway, I added a 12 volt pump that will run from a battery. I then ran the water through and nothing was leaking so I plugged in the power supplies in a solar generator so that I could track how much power it output. With all the thermoelectric coolers connected, it peaked at more than 900 watts. Here you can see how quickly the cold plate reaches below 0 degrees celsius. And here I'm losing some brain cells. For this to work, the alcohol has to generate a super saturated layer in which the particles can ionize the air and the alcohol is drawn to that which leaves visible trails behind. So I put the blinds down and this is what I could see. Alcohol vapor but no tracks which was really disappointing. Now according to Google we need to reach negative 25 degrees celsius for this to work so the naive but curious Simon grabs a temperature sensor and reads out negative 24 degrees celsius before it heats up slowly again. So that sucks. Now the issue we're having is that it's not forming a solid layer of clouds that you can see in so many other cloud chamber videos. One factor, and I don't know if this has an impact whatsoever, is the relationship between the cold alcohol on the bottom and the warmer alcohol in the upper part of the chamber. So what I've done is I've taken a build plate from a 3D printer, which is just a heating element, and it's 24 volts, but I'm running 12 volts through it. So it only reaches about 60 degrees Celsius, which I think is enough to heat up the alcohol on the top and see if that increases the cloud effect. Hopefully it does. It didn't seem to do much of anything, which led me to believe that the cold plate still didn't get cold enough. However, it may just take time for the super saturated vapor to form. But I then realized that maybe we just needed some more pressure. Check these out, I've constructed a plastic bracket that I intend to use as a way of adding more pressure on the Peltier being sandwiched between the water block and the aluminium. Hopefully squeezing them even closer to each other. You can imagine if there's an air pocket on the hot side of the Peltier, all that heat generated is not being removed by the water block and the water, and that's why I made these brackets to hopefully prevent that problem. The vapor was now a lot denser, so me and my buddy Alfred could finally for the first time see some patterns, and here's our reaction. These are some of the very first trails that I was able to catch on camera. But to go even lower in temperature, I grabbed a bucket and washer fluid. I also added a second electric pump to increase the flow to hopefully remove the heat even faster. Built a new chamber out of glass and 3D printed a holder for a new light setup. And everything seemed to be working so I left the fluid in the freezer. And this is what it looks like. It says it's negative 
18. Holy f PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser, and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM, and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. We're also testing these new LED lights that I've installed much lower, so we're gonna see how that works. We're getting negative 26. And we're down to negative 28 and the reason is the incredibly cold washer fluid can keep the thermoelectric cooler at a lower temperature. Which, oh by the way, I did open one and here's how it looks like inside. And that seemed to have done the trick because this is what happened next. The trails you see are mainly caused by alpha and beta radiation. Beta particles are electrons with different amount of kinetic energy, but with low energy to begin with, which is why they are often faint and have curly paths as they bounce around air molecules. Some of these trails can be very short and so bent out of shape they are almost complete circles, while others are much longer and can cover the entire distance of the cold plate. All examples of negatively charged electrons passing through. The second most common track are atmospheric radon, spitting out an alpha particle that consists of a helium nuclei and are emitted by radioactive radon as it decays inside the chamber. Not always, as I managed to capture both very long ones and thin alpha particles, but they are always much brighter than beta particles as they are a lot heavier. There are tracks so rare that observing one is likely to never happen during your lifetime. One example of this is the cosmic ray colliding with an atom and splitting in two, generating this forking trail. Without any radioactive materials, I can't test it, but I have an idea. Ah oh, fuck, I was a bit early. What would happen if you take something like a banana and put it inside the chamber? Would it generate any tracks? Bananas, for example, are rich in potassium, and some of that potassium is naturally radioactive. At first, nothing out of the ordinary was happening, but then all of a sudden, trails that I had never seen before appeared, and I don't know why. My best guess would be that it was a discharge of static electricity surrounding the chamber that interfered, and it was just a random accident that it would happen while the banana was in the chamber. So I went to ChatGPT and asked how I could shoot electrons through the chamber without using any radioactive or building a cathode ray tube. It came up with an answer that I hadn't thought about and that was using a hot wire to release electrons. So I made this out of cathode wire and connected the battery to each end. And this is what happened the first time I used it. I'm not sure what's going on here, but my best guess would be that there is an excess of electrons which raises the energy of the gas molecules, making it easier for them to collide and produce ions. The ions then serves as nucleation sites for the condensation of the alcohol vapor, producing this visible fog. Alpha particles shouldn't be able to travel through paper, but electrons can. So I put up a piece of paper and a thick piece of plastic. The alpha particle is more massive and carry more charge than the beta, but they are also slower, which makes them more vulnerable to being stopped by a relatively thin barrier. Beta particles are lighter and move faster, which makes them better able to penetrate through materials like paper. So the alpha particles would be stopped by a piece of paper while some beta particles could penetrate it. I did try a few ways of illuminating the alcohol vapor and lighting is everything. The thing that really did make it pop was six flashlights in a slight downwards angle towards the plate. I was surprised that only using one stack of thermoelectric cooler, sometimes you have to stack them two, three on top of each other to reach negative 30 degrees Celsius, but the washer fluid definitely did the trick. Or you could just use dry ice. It's not that easy to get your hands on dry ice in Sweden, so this just made more sense, I guess. Okay, leave a comment what you think I should put in the cloud chamber next, and uh, thumbs up the video if you did enjoy it. And I'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye.